Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to go back and visit uh, this analog uh, sound level sensor. But instead of just looking at the sensor or incorporating it in a bar graph LED display, we're going to utilize uh, the Pico display. Uh, looking here at the setup, this is uh, how I was uh, creating that sound level meter in a previous video. We had the, uh, the Pico, we had the bar graph, all the resistors, all the wires, and then the analog sound level sensor. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now the good part is, this is very fast and very responsive. The bad part is, it's a lot of components and a lot more work. So I decided that uh, I would put to use one of my favorite displays, or fast becoming my favorite display, uh, the Pico display. These things, uh, it's by Pi Maroney. Uh, I've found it to be quite a delight to work with, and uh, so I'm using it for a variety of different projects now. So in this case, we're doing a sound level meter uh, that is using the Pico display instead of a bar graph display. Uh, we'll give a quick demonstration of it. As you can see, it's still fairly responsive, but nowhere near as fast as that bar graph was. Uh, the other thing is, I think the uh, bar graph is a, has a little more light intensity, uh, especially if you up the current and drive the LEDs a little more, but the Pico display, uh, display looks perfectly good for this application. So what we'll do, we'll walk through, uh, I've got a fritzing diagram, but it's really only applying between the sensor and the Pico. And then uh, we'll go into the program code, and there I'll go into a little explanation uh, about the uh, Pico graphics programming. Uh, and the sound sensor we've already covered a number of times, so I'm going to gloss over that. Now here is the fritzing diagram for uh, the original sound level meter. And uh, as you can see, it's quite busy. And if we switch over to our current version, other than the display is missing from this picture, uh, all we got is the Pico and a few wires and the sound level sensor. Much, much easier. Wiring uh, is very straightforward. We're coming out of the Pico for 3.3 volts and putting that into VCC of the sensor. Ground is coming from the sensor back to the Pico on one of the ground inputs. Uh, we are using, uh, oops, that is not correct for what we're currently doing right now. So let me slide that guy over. Uh, I believe that's uh, analog to digital channel zero. I must have prototyped it uh, in a different configuration. And so now we've got it lined up on analog to digital channel zero, going to the envelope input. That is the input for uh, an, an analog output signal from the device. Let me save that as a reminder that uh, I, I made changes and you'll get the corrected version uh, if you download that from our website. Uh, we'll get into the code here. Um, I've got some good commentary at the top, just kind of uh, saying that uh, uh, what we're doing in this demo and uh, using the sound level sensor, the bar graph, etc. The source for the analog uh, sound level sensor, which was Amazon, a source for the Pico display, which is, of course, Pi Maroney. Here in the U.S., we got a lot of retailers that handle it, uh, mail order outfits. Uh, and for the most part, they've all seemed to have been very well stocked on them. And then a source for the instructions. So we'll hop to those websites real quick. Uh, here is that sound level sensor that I got off of Amazon. And notice that uh, you got to have all these outputs or all these connection points. Otherwise, it's just a digital level uh, sound sensor. All it detects is just a certain peak level and, and that's all it reports back to you. 
Uh, the Pi Moroni display, uh, Pico display from Pi Moroni. Of course, this is on their website uh, and all their other goodies. I'm really becoming a fan of that company and a lot of their products. Uh, and I really do appreciate the fact that they are very strongly supporting our community with the Raspberry Pi Picos, as well as, of course, the Raspberry Pis as well. And then on their GitHub, this is where you would find instructions on the Pico graphics commands that are used to program the display. So with that, we'll go back to the program. Uh, and that covers all of this. Here is a note saying that the LED bar graph display is has some superior characteristics, primarily uh, response speed. It's very, very fast and responsive. We're going to import a time library uh, and then the Pi Moroni uh, stuff that are, is related to this display. Uh, we're not using button, but I just get in the habit of including everything when I'm working on uh, a device, because you never know, I might use one of the buttons. Uh, we're not using random in this uh, iteration. That was for uh, a demo of this exact thing that I was doing uh, for this display in another video. We'll configure our analog input uh, from the sound sensor. Now we're going to get uh, into a lot of the stuff for uh, dealing with the graphics. Uh, because the way this is set up, I'm not using a lot of colors in the Pico display. You can configure it to use more and more colors, but then you use more and more RAM. So it's always a balance. Um, I only needed about uh, this many colors, so I got it set at uh, the lower setting uh, for that pen number, pen underscore P4. Uh, we need to tell it which type of display uh, that that library is using so it knows what to do with it. And we're rotating it 270 degrees, and that would put this at the top and the graphics going down. And then it would be approximately, I think, 135 pixels wide and 240 pixels tall. Uh, and that's what uh, these two variables here are uh, retaining, 0 to 134, 0 to 39. Uh, just setting up a few parameters for establishing where the bar graph will show up, essentially in the center and then uh, uh, along uh, the vertical here. And then the width would be uh, 40 pixels wide. Uh, we're going to turn the backlight on. I found that this display uh, is much nicer with the backlight set to full on at 1.0. If it's set to 0.5, it just seems really kind of dark and washed out to me. And then we'll just establish a font, which is used to display the actual digital uh, output value of uh, what the sound level is at between a scale of 1 and 10. This area here uh, looks like a lot of code, but all we're doing is establishing some uh, colors that we can use. And we'll put those colors in a list. Uh, there is black that is not in that list, and that is what we're going to use for our background color. That's why I've kind of excluded it from there. Uh, and then we'll have the text color will be set to white. Uh, but other than that, this list just contains these colors, and they would be uh, going from bottom to top, uh, bottom being white, and then getting brighter and more intense as the sound level increases. We're going to create a function uh, for clearing the display. Uh, it, it enhances the existing display clear function in that we're going to uh, use it to set a color that we want to clear it to. In this case, black, we run the clear, and then we do an update. You always do an update anytime you change the graphics, otherwise they will not show up. The update makes those changes show up on the display. Uh, then we're going to uh, go into a routine here uh, that animates the graph, and we'll come back to that function uh, after we cover this function, but we'll start down here near the main portion of the program. We're going to have a delay in here so that the display is slightly animated as opposed to just flashing all the colors on at once and then off, etc. 
Uh, I just like to put a little animation, a little motion into our graphics uh, 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 displays and so forth. So that's what that delay is about. Uh, we're going to run our clear function up here to get the display ready to show the information. We're going to take a reading from our uh, sound sensor and then we're going to go into this routine show level which will actually in this uh, uh, instance it's going to do some data conversion for us and what we want to do is establish in that range of this analog reading establish a range from uh, essentially 10 percent to a hundred percent and that's what's kind of going on here and uh, what I'm describing with the 1K, 30K, those are kind of the ranges that this sensor is outputting for quiet to loud. 1K being pretty much ambient, 30K being pretty, pretty loud and obnoxious noise going on. And that would create a 0.033 per 1% increase. So that's a factor that we would use in this conversion. Then we'll establish a rank for this sound level, and that would be by uh, calculated by taking our analog reading and multiplying it times 0 0.00033, which is just slightly more uh, factored version of this to get into the scale that we want. And then if we exceeded our ranking level uh, in that calculation, we will cap it to 10, so 10 is the top of our scale. Then from here, we will call animate the rank. And this is the portion where we go to this function that will actually animate uh, the display of the, the sound level. Uh, we're going to set the uh, pen, set a pen to black, and then we're going to create a, a, a rectangle uh, using display rectangle, and that would be at the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and then X max on the width, and then the Y coordinate or Y height uh, that we want to clear. These commands are explained in greater detail uh, in a, a tutorial on how to work with the Pico display. So don't get too caught up on a lot of this detail. Uh, then we're going to set the text color to clear, uh, and then we will uh, get a string version of that level value, 1 through 10. Then this function here will actually display that level uh, value 1 through uh, 10 at this location and at that scale. Uh, we're going to set the base height at 20 for each uh, uh, bar setting for each set uh, segment of the, the graph that we're trying to create. Uh, we will set establish our base uh, point for our, our Y position. Then we're going to go through a, a for loop here in the range of 0 to 10. And if B, this, is less than level here, we will then uh, display, uh, we'll set the display color to the pen color uh, that was created up here in this range. So 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, and that being red. So that's how we pick which colors each segment of the bar graph gets displayed. Uh, if, if we're not in the range, if B is not in the range of this, uh, and uh, then we're going to go to uh, displaying just black to erase anything that was there, we'll display a rectangle at uh, the uh, starting position on X and Y position, the width, and then the height of the little bar segment. We'll do the, do the display update, because otherwise it won't show up. And then we update our Y position uh, for the next segment of that bar display. And then this just repeats over and over again. So we'll go back to the workbench here. I'll demonstrate it one more time. And it's pretty responsive. Now keep in mind, I do have it slowed down a little bit with this delay command. Um, but other than that, uh, it's not going to get a whole lot faster based on my testing. Perhaps with some clever programming from one of you, we could speed it up and make it just as zippy as the uh, LED bar graph display. 
Uh, but I think this gives you an idea of how we can take a more complicated bar graph, sound, sound meter with a bar graph, and put it into a fewer components and as well as still being very compact. So I think that'll wrap it up for uh, this video on how to make a sound level meter with a Pico display and a analog sound level sensor. I would like to point out uh, there are other videos that I've got in this whole Pico series explaining how to work with uh, the Pico graphics on the Pico display. I think I've got two or three videos either already made or planned in total for working with that display. I found it to be just a wonderful device to work with. That wraps it up for this one. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.